This is about humans dreaming together. About humans supporting each other on our journeys. It's about the science and the art behind making our dream lives a reality. To the students of life. The young and the curious. The dreamers and the doers. To those who crave to be a strong individual. And want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the Dreamology Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreamology podcast. Dreamology is the study of the science and the art behind making your dream life a reality. And on this podcast, we are focused on giving you the mindset, tools, and strategies for making daily progress towards your dreams, no matter where you are in your journey. My name is Tim Bishop. I am the co-founder of the Dreamers Initiative, a student of life and a life conversation junkie who is on a mission to identify how to truly live the dream life and help you do the same. Our guests include best-selling authors, neuroscientists, entrepreneurs, and dream chasers around the world who share their knowledge, greatest stories, and life lessons with us. And before we dig in, I want to mention this podcast is brought to us by the Dreamers Initiative, a personal development community for helping Gen Z and millennials awaken their dream life and make them a reality. We believe humans are stronger together and that together we can accomplish anything. Let's get started on today's episode. Today's guest is Brandon Polizuk. Brandon is the founder of Social Butterfly, the founder of Lincoln Drink, and in 2019, he was named Young Entrepreneur of the Year in Minnesota. And some of the big takeaways I got out of this conversation are one, really, that Brandon's emphasis on longevity is very refreshing. You know, a lot of us want things to happen very quick and in the now and in the moment, but Brandon's really focused on how do I create a life that I love, a business that I love that's going to last. And you'll hear that in the way he talks about everything in his life. Another thing that I really liked about our conversation was Brandon's emphasis on doing things together. He realized that he could go off on his own and try to make it to the top, but at an early age, he found that there was power and joy and beauty in doing things together in group effort and in making his dreams reality, not only alone, but with a team of people that he truly loves and admires. And the last thing that I really loved about Brandon was just You can hear his passion for everything he does. In this interview, you can really feel it. Um, And that passion is contagious. And so I hope that that passion is igniting a little spark inside of you as you listen to this and gets you excited to do whatever it is that you got to do in your own life. This conversation has a heavy focus on entrepreneurship as entrepreneurship is a big part of Brandon's life. But around minute 25, we start to dive into personal development, around what is greatness, around the importance of intimate relationships, and a lot more. So without further ado, here is Brandon. Everyone, we're here with Brandon Polozuk today. He is the founder of Social Butterfly, and uh, he's a good-ass dude from what I can see after our first meeting. How you doing, Brandon? Good, man. Thanks for having me. I'm pumped. Yeah, dude. I'm super stoked. And we talked a little bit before we started uh, so I almost changed my plan on where I want to start this because I, I almost just kind of want to get the backstory right away. Like, did you go to school at Mankato? Yep. So that's where things all began. Yep. So I'm curious, like right away, was entrepreneurship kind of like always your plan or what was like going through your mind as like the final couple of years of your, of your college experience? Yeah. So entrepreneurship was definitely not even in the plan. Um, I didn't even know what entrepreneur meant when I first heard it. I always thought of like a business owner. So I had to actually look up the word what entrepreneur meant, which is a funny, (laughs) funny connotation just because it's such a buzzword nowadays and everyone's an entrepreneur. But um, when I went to Mankato, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I had been working at like retail at PacSun. I've done service. I've done logistics and what I really like is just kind of seeing my full potential and so um, my mom's like well you like fashion you like advertising you like the way things look you should check out marketing and so I opened up the book with all the majors and I just started scoping and looked at marketing and looked at marketing roles I'm like yeah this would be cool I think I could I could jump into that and um, that's kind of where it started and I, I got the interest into it but we were in a class where we had to come up with a fake business and that's where the wheels really started turning and so um, we had to come up with a fake business where we had to come up with the website and pitch it to professors for your final grade and i was talking to my mom and my mom's a creative director um, and now she's into sales but 
she was in a in a work period and she was running a Facebook page for like eight hundred dollars a month and it blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind that someone was paying someone else eight hundred dollars every single month to just post, no advertising. And so then my wheels really started turning and went this class project. There was twelve groups and I think it was like eight out of the t- out of the twelve were like t-shirt companies because it's very easy to formulate over a product. For and sure. there was like no service-based companies. And so I was like, well, let's do something different. And if we're going to put this, it was a semester long project. We're going to put all this time into it. Let's actually do something with it. Cause I hate putting in work and not seeing it come to life. Like I'm truly passionate about idea, execution, fruition. And, um, so we literally were sitting in my, um, in my family room and Jake Hoffman, who's sitting over there, uh, he was in the class project. So straight up OG, but that's unreal. Yeah. Um, so we had four guys in the project and, um, just kind of ran with it. We were sitting in the living room, like, what do we name it? What do we do? And I was like, let's run Facebook pages and we could like call it social butterfly or something. Like it was literally just like off the cuff, just throw it out there and like, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll come back to the name. Let's just run with the project. And Pitched it to professors, got like a C. <laughs> and uh, have you talked to those professors since? <laughs> uh, there's been multiple projects that I've actually worked the company into and just didn't get a good grade because when, when we were doing social media, it was such a new thing. Like it was sophomore year of college, I was nine, 18 or 19, and right. social media was like a buzzword. It was like, oh yeah, we need to be on it, but no one, like people were posting like it was National Salad Day and they'd post a salad and they're like a bike company. Like, just they didn't know how to use it. And so you see all of like your friends and your colleagues are using social to like brand themselves and, and like just put like perspective of what how they're living their life. And I've just always been a big brand guy. Like I'm uh, I'm really passionate about uh, different brands and how they how they attribute and connect with people. And so when you put all of those into a stirring pot and boil the water, like that's how we came up with but social butterfly and kept rocking with it since. Dude, righteous man. Yeah. That's so funny to see the C on the first school project. I would hate that, hang that grade on your wall. <laughs> like, I should have kept it. I don't even know where it's at. I was so pissed. I was like, dude. And at the time, I actually, um, there was another class project the next year, and it was a professional selling project, and I was pitching them on why social media was so important, especially for especially for the university to try to get students to keep coming because everyone's like starting on businesses online and they're not going to the university and stuff like that. And that project I got to see as well. And I actually had a current contract with the university at the time. So it's like, that's kind of when I realized like school's great and it forces you to do things. Like I'm very grateful that I went to school because it sparked that moment. And mm-hmm. I met very great resource, uh, people and resources, but you don't necessarily have to pay tuition to do that. You know, you can kind of just linger around and hear the right things and do the right things to make it happen too. So for sure. For sure. Yeah. There was a period of time where I was definitely like anti school and was bad enough in it a bit. <laughs> yeah. But then I did Same. realize, cause I, I have a similar, I mean about, I studied marketing too. And I think similar interests and it was at first I was like, well, that didn't really teach me what I know now, but I'm like, well, maybe it did. Like yeah. maybe it was like the thing that led me to what I realized I actually liked. So I, I understand what you're, what you're saying there. Yeah. And, okay, I was definitely so anti school for a bit. <laughs> did you, did you start the first, like your first client? Was that like while you were still in school? Yeah. So, um, I actually made business cards and we still have those business cards today. Like I'm so bad at handing those out. I, I made like 250 and it, we, we replicated the iPhone four cause that was the iPhone at the time. <laughs> and so we made a little yeah. business card that said social butterfly and it's got like the shape of an iPhone four. It's got like the home button and like the contact information on the back. And so that following year after we had launched, um, the, the project, we were going through the project that next semester, I, uh, I printed out these business cards and there's a class called, um, business 295. And it was telling you to like, get your LinkedIn going, how to network and how to go into an interview. And it was like kind of getting you ready for the workforce. And I was like, well, I'm ahead of this. Like I've already kind of got those things down. I had a LinkedIn. And so printed out these business cards. And I just handed it to the professor. I'm like, here's what I want to do. Don't even have the business, but here's what I want to do. Here's my business card. Like, let's talk. And he actually set me up and got me my first client while I was in school. So at that point it was like, go to class, but I would open up my laptop and I'm like designing the proposals and like helping out with the social media posts and stuff. And, um, it was very just like, just throw it out there and see what happens. And it just really picked up. And then luckily our first client, one of them was, uh, well, we actually, we kind of grabbed two accounts at the same time, which worked out really well. One of them was the university we did a project, like a video project for. 
So that was big because we took that big university portfolio piece and started hitting up all the local businesses saying, hey, the university is already working with us. Like we were clearly validated. Mm. And then uh, the second one was actually running their social media account for a monthly basis. And it was like a knockoff um, Chipotle. It was called Burrito Wings. <laughs> and it was bigger portions, authentic food right on campus. And it was like a no brainer. But he had a hard time getting people in there and he wasn't using social the way that he should be. And so we took it over and right when he took it over, he wanted to do delivery. And so like you have all those check marks and Chipotle is just a, a home run in college. So we threw it was back when you could throw like 10 bucks at a Facebook post and just boost it. And it got like 400 likes on the first time we boosted it. And I remember sitting on my porch and I like our phone was just blowing up. It was like someone liked your post, someone commented on your post. And I was like oh my God, we just made it. Like we're, we're, we're ready, dude. Like we just <laughs> did this. And, uh, he, we worked with him for a while and then we just kind of started taking, um, all the different aspects of what we were doing with them and just templating it out and building and learning and failing and finding some success pockets. But that's where it all started. It was just tr throwing it out there and see who would, uh, really listen to us and give us a shot. And then, yeah, man, it just kind of went from there. Yeah. We obviously carried it all the way through. So <laughs> we got a sign. Now. Yeah, it lights four, up. Yeah, four years <laughs> in the making. So it's been four years. Yeah, dude, that's that's legit, man. And I feel like the inspiration, or when I just when I hear that, I get inspired because it's really just putting out in the world what you wanted to get. Yeah, you said this is what I want to do. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have it yet. I don't necessarily care if you are gonna accept this, but somebody's gonna like. Right. This is what I want to do, and you just put that out there and made it happen. I think that's. I think that that's super legit. And so it sounds like then your initial motivation, I'm, I'm, I want to get a little bit more into that because it sounds like it was just, you had an idea and you were just like, I want to run with this. Like, yeah. was, there, was there any other deeper motivations for, I want to start this, you know, and you can talk in and out what all you guys do, but just, I want to start this, you know, entity that does all this big marketing for people. Or at yeah. first it was just kind of like, this is a path I see myself taking and I want to run with it. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit of everything, honestly, like I, I like to do things on my own terms and not to say that I just wanted to become an entrepreneur and to work when I want, but I wanted to like make decisions that I knew I had a direct impact in. And sometimes when you go to corporate settings, which I've worked in, it's like, it's great. There's great companies out there, but it just wasn't for me. And especially when you grow like a big corporation, when you first like get in there, like things are slow. And there's obviously logistics and there's way more in depth that create that slowness, but it just freaked me out. Like I yeah. like to move fast. I like to move a million miles an hour and there's good things to that and there's bad things to that. But what happened was, is I was selling school newspaper advertising on campus and I was just crushing the sales. And I just started feeling a little bit guilty because I don't know if like it had a direct impact of like, so I saw it was making an impact, but I saw way bigger potential for these businesses and I knew what they were spending. And so what I wanted to do is really open up the, the mm. floodgates and to like college students are all on social media, but we're running print. And I don't remember the last time someone's opening up a magazine. I mean, there's definitely people there, but it's not as big as an opportunity. And so I actually told um, that company that I was leaving to go start this uh, marketing agency called Social Butterfly. And like, I mean, they're like, what? Like, <laughs> it was like, it was such a new thing. And like, even like my friends are like from high school were making fun of me and like people around me are just like, dude, what, what are you doing? Like Social Butterfly? And uh, that just put a chip on my shoulder and I'm just like, watch, just watch. Just, just yeah, watch. and so, um, you know, obviously, like, I, I appreciate success, but what does that look like? And, you know, up front, it was about, like, oh, I saw money coming in, I'm successful. But now it's like, okay, how are we actually helping this business? Are we pushing the needle? Are we, are we like, exhausting all efforts? Are we really thinking about where this really needs to go? Or are we just doing tasks mindlessly and just running through it? Are we calling people just to call them? And so that really opened up the floodgates because I like things with a purpose. Um, I'm, I'm always about long game. Like I got longevity tatted behind my ear. Like I've got the butterfly start date tatted here. And that was literally six months in. I just tatted it on me. So I was like, no turning back. Yeah, it's, um, on, it's on my body now. I'm yeah, not. exactly. And it's like, even if it wasn't, yeah. even if this thing didn't come out, if, if it doesn't turn out in the next four years and we shut it down, like it's a reminder to myself, like I made such a commitment to do what I wanted to do. And when people hit me up on Instagram or LinkedIn and some of these other platforms and saying like, Hey man, like, where do I start? I'm like, you're already not going down the right direction by asking where to start because all you have to do is just get out there, like start reaching out mm -hmm. to people and going and, 
pitching your ideas and like just doing things. I mean, you can get in anyone's inbox if you say you'll do something for free. Anyone's yeah. inbox. But everyone wants the dollar up front and they don't know the long game. They're looking for that short term. So yeah, it really just the motivation started just seeing, uh, you know, what the potential could be. And we actually just took a personality test as a company. And it, I was very confused on like, if I'm a entrepreneur, if I'm a creative director and going back and forth. But one of the connotations in my personality is I enjoy group effort. And so I'm probably one of the most transparent business owners within our company because I like to build everything up as a team. I mean, I, I could go take a deal and walk away and I've, I can go to LA and do, you know, top of the top, but I want to show people like Minneapolis is slept on. You can build a team here. You can do things the way you want to do it. And it's way more rewarding to have a group of people that seen your downsides, have seen your positives and seen your successes. And even over the course of four years, like we've had people that have come and gone and people that have stuck through. And it's like, that just means so much to me, like having that group around you rather than just like a high paying job and like a shit ton of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, for sure, man. That's, yeah, that's pretty legit. Um, so now, now you're like, what, four, you said four years into it? Yep. So I think it's interesting now that you say that because I feel like you can see people who are four years in, five years in, and you see, like, what was the award you won, like, Young Entrepreneur of the Year? And you know, you see these things, and at first glance, and somebody's looking in, and they say, how did he do that? But you don't often see, well, here's the four years beforehand yeah so I want you to give me like one or two stories about like the struggle and the the low moments and what actually it looks like to you know get to something to now which even you know now is like this is just the beginning yeah um but can you give me like a story or two of of like wow this absolutely was, this was what we were doing and this was hard yeah um I mean to be completely honest like we've had incredible opportunities but I think the hardest thing, and I've talked about it in other podcasts, but the hardest thing for me is just balancing it. Like I started this with like my college buddies. And so a lot of the people work here are very close friends to me and kind of like you guys, like I, it's hard for me to shut work off. Mm. And so, um, it's hard to relate to other people who don't resonate with like self-improvement and work and stuff like that. And I have some more things that we can say about that later in the pod, but one of the toughest times was, um, I was... I was so set on like, okay, here's how we move forward. But I wasn't set on like, how does, like when you build a business, like people are going to leave your company. And that wasn't something that crossed my mind. I was thinking like, okay, you're on, like, let's grow this thing to the top. You're equally as invested. And so, um, one of my really, really close friends, uh, it just wasn't for him. Um, he, uh, he ended up, you know, getting his girlfriend pregnant. Now they're engaged and, He's obviously a lot happier now, but that was like one of the first just like stabs to the heart, not by like, damn, like I'm pissed you're leaving. It was just like, whoa, like that's reality. And like, now I got to find someone to replace that and like mend that relationship. And like, it was just such a struggle for me to wrap my head around, like balancing the difference between employees and friends and all of that. And so that happened almost two years ago. And it was a, it was a really big wake up call for me to get over that and not hold resent from him to like mm. being like, why didn't you stick with this? Like, I'm so happy that he did it because I think it actually strengthened our relationship. But that was a really tough part for us. Um, I think another one is like, we're going through it right now. There's a lot of opportunity on the table and it's just trying to figure out what direction we want to go down. And so I'm constantly just running ideas past my team and trying to figure out what that looks like. And there's been moments where like the numbers will never add up. It's like that gut feeling thing. And so sometimes I take that gut feeling and it's, it's tough. So one of them is we moved out of Mankato. Um, we've still got an office there. We've still got some employees, but we were headquartered here in North Loop, Minneapolis. And that was a big decision for me because our whole business, all of our resources, we had very, we had some resources here, but it was very tiptoeing and we had like cement feet in Mankato and our, our great network and a lot of people kind of knew of us there. We dominated that market early on. And so we just decided to pull the trigger because I, I know, I think the lifestyle of like where my company wants to go and the clients we want to work with is definitely up here. But it was really hard for me to wrap my head that we were going to leave. Like we did, we do a focus day um, every quarter we take a day out of the office and really talk about where do we want to go? Because especially in an agency, there's no working on the business 
Monday through Friday on a regular day. Like you're always working on everyone else's business. And so when we took a focus day, I had like a three-year plan and a five-year plan. And I literally wanted to be headquartered out of Mankato and be an, a national agency. And it could work, but I think I was just holding on to something that wasn't as realistic um, for sourcing like the people that I wanted on my team and what that looked like. And so we literally made that jump about a month ago and it's still, you know, we're still dealing with the repercussions of it a little bit, but I'm really happy that we just pulled the trigger. And at the end of the day, we're always going to fall on our own sword, not everyone else's. And that was something that I kind of said to myself, I'm not in the business to make all my peers necessarily in Mankato happy, or even in Minneapolis, I'm in the business to make me and my team happy. And whatever that looks like, it's, it's gotta be that way. Because like I said, like I love teamwork. I love group activity and, it's just, it feels so right. Like there's no way to describe a gut feeling other than a gut feeling. And sometimes you just got to pull the trigger on it. For sure, man. Yeah. I, I resonate with that a lot. I mean, for me, it was like working with my brother. I mean, and just, and we have this dreams of bringing in like our, you know, our closest friends who yeah. are like, dude, we're going to start this thing and we're going to, and having that like tribe element to the work you do for me and it sounds like for you is just really powerful. It's yeah. Something that you said is that gut feeling that when you're in a corporate office and you're surrounded by hundreds of people, you don't feel like you're kind of in this, this tribe you really care about. There's something different about it. I mean, yeah. you said it perfectly. I don't need to say it again, but you know, yeah. there's something that like it's a feeling there that, that hits home. Yeah. For sure. And that, and that also kind of scares me too, because I want to build a big company. And so I don't know if I necessarily need a hundred employees, but it's going to get to that point where we're going to be big and I don't want to be that big monster that I was so scared of. You know what I mean? It's like a little bit of force, foresight. It's like right. we're growing and like now we have seven employees total. And it's like, dude, I remember when this was like me and a couple homies, like <laughs> just like running this and this was paying like bar tabs and stuff. Like now it's like this is legitimate business. It's a legitimate career path for people and people clearly see the potential into it. And so, yeah, man, it's 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 a trip. It's, yeah. it's a grind. It's a trip. It's, it's love. It's lust. It's failures. It's hurt. It's all of it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, man. Um, so talk to me about like what a, a normal client experience right now looks like, like, you know, on a full scale, like what do you guys, you know, I, I have dude, some it, ideas it or change, is it just it changes every day? I don't know what you guys do like, you know, on a <laughs> general basis. Yeah. Here. Um, it's shifting a little bit. We're definitely making a big play in the sports marketing world. Um, obviously a lot of people know that we work really closely with unreal and they do athletic, uh, leisure athleisure is kind of like the new buzzword. So, um, we do all of their digital strategies. So newsletters, social paid, social organic, social, um, photography, videography, uh, all of it, um, anything that you see online, we have our hands in. And then, I mean, we have, like we're running accounts for like a Windows roofing and siding company and we just closed, like we got them a lead through Facebook. It was a 20 window bid, which if you're in the window business, that's a nice bid to be bidding at and he closed it and we're running all of his Facebook and digital marketing on that end too. So what we really focus on is, you know, we love the one-off video projects, but we want to become like a long lasting relationship. Again, going back to like mm -hmm. longevity and like mm -hmm. long-term thinking, we want to become like the way I pitch it to businesses is we're going to be your in-house marketing department from an outside perspective. And so whatever you need across the platform, mm -hmm. whether we do it internally or we connect you with our resources, like we're the company to go to because we have that edge. And I think having that edge really wins nowadays. I mean, you look at like Twitter and like Chick-fil-A and all these big companies like Wendy's and Popeye's like you have to have something to be relatable to. And so a long time ago, it wasn't as relatable. It was so just like big picture and this and that. And now you're looking at it and it's like, if, if you have the right things in place, you, you can be a lot more edgy and a lot more different. And like quick perspective, like we do a ton of high quality video edits. Now you're starting to see that people automatically resonate that that's our ad. So if you have like a funnel, we use like the edited stuff as like a topple funnel to get them to like it. But then the phone content, like for, for the canvases or for like uh, the hot sauce company we work with, like if they grab a phone and they start doing ads of it like that, it doesn't look like an ad. It looks like one of your friends are posting it. And if you like it, you're in their retargeting funnel. And if you see something enough times and a lot of different people using it and validates all those checkpoints, you're going to purchase it. And so what we really like to do is like, what is, what are you doing right now? What are your competitors doing? But let's focus on what they're not doing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we do it all. Cool, man. Yeah. What are like a couple, like maybe just like two or three things that 
when you go in right away and maybe just for, you know, any young entrepreneur out there, like some things that right off the bat, you're like, all right, these are, these are a couple boxes you're just not checking right now that, that need to happen as far as like your social strategy goes. Yeah. I think the first step that a lot of people miss is they don't ask where the company wants to go. They just jump into, here's what you should be doing. And so you might initially be off the off the gate in different directions. Maybe you think this company could be a hundred million dollars and this company only wants to be a $50 million company. Not every company has to be a billion trillion or whatever. Like there's plenty of businesses that maintain growth, but it's like a $10 million or $20 million. And so what I really like to do is just figure out like, what are you doing right now in sales? Where do you want to go? And what is, what is like a long-term goal for you? And what are brands that you like? And why do you like them? And why did you, like just getting to know them before mm. I even talk about what I think they should be doing. Because again, it's all about coming to a common playing field. It's not, oh, just listen to me and I'll do what I do. And if a client says, hey, I trust everything you do, run it. I'll absolutely do that. But it's really just kind of figuring out what the business looks like on the inside and what they're currently doing on the outside. And obviously marketing is usually very focused on the outside. So you kind of just have to figure out what that looks like. Mm. Um, the biggest thing for me is asking the question, are you okay with doing brand plays or do you like transactional plays? You can do both. You can stick to one or the other, but you have to understand the repercussions of that. If you want to do a business transactional play, it's probably slower growth. Brand plays, you don't necessarily see the direct ROI, but it's like kind of like that gut feeling. Like you can't put a number. The number will never add up to a brand play. And so that's where I get my goosebumps and mm -hmm. like I will stay up till midnight editing because of the, the brand plays. But I understand the business plays, the transactional plays means that I'm probably going to keep them as a client because I'm making yeah, them money. Yeah, so for sure. Um, I, I just like the whole spectrum. I like to look at things from a whole spectrum. Yeah, no, dude, that's, that's totally where I nerd out too. Cause yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's your classic Gary V who's like, yeah, make this content, do it for five years and then come talk to me. Like, yeah, you exactly. Know, the whole just like, again, the longevity brands, I feel like it's just that longevity aspect. Yeah. Of, like if you think about it from Gary V's aspect, like Everyone had access to YouTube when it first launched and anyone could have done the, the wine, uh, the wine club or whatever he, his thing was called. But yeah, you could have, anyone could have done that and been exactly where Gary's at. Like he was working in a liquor store at like 30 something. Like it, that just blows my mind. Yeah. And like the insane. fact, like me and my team are so young, it's like, dude, let's take every single risk we can because we could, we could still go at this for another five years and we'll be 30. Like, dude, so I could young. go get a corporate job at 30 if I really wanted to. And I could probably get up there in the ranks because of what we've done on our own. So for sure, for sure. Yeah. So I want to get into like your decision making because I'm interested how people just make decisions and how to spend their time and their life and what they do. So from like a, a holistic lens, you know, from business to in your life, like how do you spend or how do you decide what to spend, you know, that time on? Or like when you look at a client, you see there's a gut feel there. Like what are those things you're checking in on, you know, like I'm always curious, like, I mean, I, you can seem like you're a personal, like personal development and a professional development, like driven person. Yeah. Like what are those metrics when you look at something and you say, all right, I could start working out more. Or I could yeah. go on this client or I can like, how do you make those choices for like how to spend your time on a day-to-day -day basis? That's a good question. I would say just when you were asking it, the first thing that came to my mind is surrounding myself by people who are in that position um, so someone who really likes reading or podcasts and like just going past like the deeper meaning, like, don't get me wrong. Like I, I have friends that just aren't into that and it's hundred percent. Okay. But I was never someone that could just like sit there and like, just chill. Like I always have my laptop open or grinding on something. Or even if I'm scrolling through Instagram, like I follow so many brands where I'm like analyzing. Okay. Like I get targeted by an ad, like who am I getting targeted by? Why am I getting targeted? What's their goal? And like, just trying to do stuff like that. So the first thing that I did is started spending more time around people that kind of liked personal development. It was something that just like gives me goosebumps. And obviously you can, it's, it's more that transactional play. Like you can see direct impact when you start working out more, listening to podcasts. And uh, where I spend my time most is whatever feels right in the moment. Honestly, like you have to lay out all your options and have all your cards face up before you can decide what play you want to play. Hmm. Um, but the first thing was just getting t a team around me that was very, very focused on personal development. And like, I get like the whole work harder connotation. Like you definitely need a balance, but like, look at athletes. No one's giving any bad connotation for hitting the gym every single day for six hours because they're a professional athlete. 
where's the difference in the work life? Like, mm -hmm. and I'm not the first person to say that I've heard that. And it resonated with me so much. Cause like I tried being an athlete, like just not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Same. So, I was a five, nine basketball player, a <laughs> yeah. white dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I just really wanted to focus and try to figure out like, okay, it's not sports. Um, I feel like I've got a good head on my shoulders and I just, I really wanted to kind of break that connotation of like, you can work hard and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's about finding what you're passionate about. Like you see me light up when I start talking about this, especially getting on a podcast. Like I just start lighting up and like, am I, do I light up around my family? Absolutely. Do I light up around my friends? Absolutely. But like, this is just something different to me and it gets mm -hmm. me so excited and I just feel so vocal about it. And why would you, why would you like pause that just to like live by society? Like, Oh, you work too hard and you need a balance. Like I definitely have put more time into having a balance so that I can even work harder when I'm working. Mm. So it, it's kind of like a push and pull type um, thing. But as far as where I really want to spend my time, it's, just keep building. I like, again, I really like seeing idea, execution, fruition. It's yeah. my thing, man. Nice, dude. I'm, I'm pumped you brought up the sports analogy because I haven't got to ask this question to anybody yet because the other day, so I have like a little vision board in my room, just like people I That's dope. Really, I need to do really that. really mess with. Yeah. Like it's, it's just like all my inspiration. I have like Will Smith and like Kelly Bryant and like Tony Robbins and Dalai Lama, like whatever, yeah. people who I just, you know, think have cool ideas about the world. But I have this Kobe one because I just played basketball and I just think Kobe's dope. And it just says the Mamba mentality. Yep. So I look at that in the morning and I looked at it for a couple months. And then one day I was hit, it just hit me. I was like, huh. I was like, what does that mean? Because we, we look at athletes and we, we give them so much like, oh, he was in the gym at 4.30 yeah. every morning. And he's striving for, for greatness. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but what, is, what does greatness mean? What does that even mean? Like, what is, how come they can, how come they can have yeah, this strive and this, this thing Relentless that seems work, like we're let, just for, you know, to get a championship, but what does that look like in the real world? Right. So if I asked you this question, like, what do you think greatness looks like outside of a sports context? Like, what do you think you would say? Good question. Really good question. I think greatness looks like all your buckets are filled. And so it's going to be different for everyone. So I, I do want a family. I do want, um, you know, a nice culture in my company. I want, I want to work with big brands. And I think greatness just really means like, can you check off all those boxes? Can you reflect and say, no, I did not neglect that. And so you could have 10 boxes, you could have two boxes. And I think it's going to change every year because I mean, even for butterfly, like in life, you have to pivot. And you might say like, hey, this is going to be the world's largest agency. We're going to have 10,000 employees. And then you're like, holy cow, like payroll taxes is a lot. <laughs> and, so, and, and that's just like a funny thing. But it's like yeah. you have to pivot and you have to adapt. And so um, it's just it's very interesting to me what greatness looks like, because it, for me, it changes all the time. And going back to like how we took the personality test, like my personality, I'm a campaigner and um I like exploring undiscovered things. And so an agency is perfect for me because I can jump into video. I can jump into copywriting. I can jump into strategy. I can jump into entrepreneurship and the business aspect. And I can jump into many different brands. So I love that. Um, as a clear answer in a one sentence, I don't think greatness can be defined by that, you know? Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. My, I asked, I've only asked one other person this, and he, his answer was like consistency with purpose. I was Damn, kind of, yeah, I, I was wish kind I could of, talk like that. But I mean, again, I mean, I, I do think to your point with too, purpose? Damn, it was a great answer. Good. It was a good answer, but he's, he's thoughtful dude. But, um, I mean, I like your answer though. Cause that kind of goes into the, even, you know, one of the last questions I ask people, which is like, what do you think are the pillars of an extraordinary life? And so if greatness is just filling those pillars for yourself, then, you know, maybe that you're doing a good job. And I, I do agree with you and that it changes for sure. Like yeah. What your life brings you and what you need and. I don't know who said this, but I, I do love just the quote and, and happiness is a loose term we'll use here, but just like, if you're just doing like what feels right and you're just running with that and you know, cause I feel like, you know, yeah. And if you're just doing that, then it's like, it's like, you'll get good. up, you'll get up earlier in the morning. You'll like, you'll work at things harder or later, or you'll, you'll just put more effort into it. And like, mm. 
whether you talk to yourself inside, like about how you're actually feeling and why you're doing things. Like if you're just getting up and going to work out of like just motions, like, dude, you're living, you're leaving so much on the table, not even for like the company you work for, but like literally for yourself. Like, yeah, again, like social opened up so many doors and I still to this day, don't think like even me or anyone in the world right now truly understands like the power of what just happened. And so <laughs> You can, yeah, you can do so much. I mean, you can start a podcast, you can start a business, you can literally like be an influencer by just vlogging what you do in a day and you can make a really successful living and what defined by your terms. But it's just, there's so much opportunity and it's like, you're sleeping on it. If you're not getting up excited, if you're not pushing the needle on like your own personal life as well as your career. Hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we could go we could go on a tangent for the, about this forever, but oh. I want to I do want to ask so how did Lincoln Drink come into the equation? <laughs> Dude, um I think maybe one of the guys could step in here if I'm wrong, but <laughs> we were we were sitting in Mankato in the media room in the co-working space we were at. Shout out Magwai. Um they actually, they really helped us get started. They gave us a lot of good office space and we did trade of work and it kind of just really helped jump our business. But Link of Drink started as I, I really wanted to throw an event and I didn't know if it looked like a, like a butterfly networking or if we started to call it something completely different. I think it was the same thing. It was like, let's just call it Link and Drink or something. And then I hit <laughs> up a, a designer on Instagram and he gave me a logo and we printed a banner and we just said, hey, we're going to start this thing. And we just put it out there. We said, we're going to run one every other month. And we did a whole year of that. So we threw six of them. The first one, like 30 people came up and for the first four or five, we did it all for free. So I was paying for the venue. I was paying for marketing and I was just like taking a brand play of like, this is what it could be. And then by five, we started charging. So we're not losing hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single time. But the whole purpose of it was Eventually, we're going to need a resource of people with very, very creative talent, analytical talent, business talent. And so what better way to host your own networking event to get all those people that could either be (laughs) potential clients or potential contractors or potential new hires all into one room looking at you and listening to what you say. But it wasn't even about us. It was about everyone else. And so when we talk about brand plays, the biggest brand play is to give someone value first. And so it started out just kind of getting... You know, Mm -hmm. actually how it actually started, the conversation started is I would kept hearing like, oh, I know of that person or I know them on Instagram or I talked to them on Instagram, but no one put them in four walls. And so that's what we did is we really just put all these people in my core company. um, Like half of my employees are from Duluth and half of them are from Mankato. And then there's, we're up in the cities now, but they had so much connections through Duluth and we had so many connections through Mankato's in the cities and vice versa that when you put all that into a room, and you have energy and everyone's kind of about that personal development and getting mm. better and just mm-hmm. striving for greatness. It shit hits different, dude. Mm. You can literally like cut the energy with a knife, dude. And I've, that's not even coming from my mouth. Like we've had people like who have been in the networking game for a long time and to start it out and consistently have 150 people there. Like the first one we had 30 and then it was like 80 and then it was like a hundred and then we consistently started getting 150 people and like, that's just not heard of, but it was because it was about everyone else, not ourselves. And mm. so then we started introducing like a panel discussion to even provide more value. But then that whole business model is based on inf- people of influence, because if you're going to have someone talking about something, they want to be an expert or have at least, um, you know, an experience in it. And so right. it just kind of, just kind of formulated and made sense. And honestly, I didn't think it was going to pick up the way it did. And that's, so this, this year we're actually doing quarterly events because we couldn't keep up. It was, <laughs> it was so, it, I mean, running an event business is a whole nother beast of its own and locking in the venue and making sure everything's right. And we always like to do our own spin to it. And, it's been fun, man. It's, it's a good release. And my phone never blows up more than anything after a night of Lincoln drink. Like it just, it's really cool to see those messages coming. Like, dude, this is something really cool. Like I've never been to a a real networking event or I have been and it's super stuffy and I feel awkward, but like Mm. Lincoln drink something different, man. It's, it's just such good energy. And people are like, I've seen people get jobs out of it, like straight up hired. I've seen contractors get things. I've seen people connect and hang out afterwards. Like that's just cool to me. It's like that transactional play where it's like you throw a bunch of these and you start seeing people really connect, not just exchanging business cards, like literally connect and start working on something like 
you can't put a price on that. You can't put time on that. Like it'll come back in, in, in probably the long game, but that's not what we're looking for because it's already provided so much value for us hmm. as a creative release and going and networking. And yeah, it's for great, sure. man. Dude, that's awesome, man. I, I love it. I have not been to one yet. Cause yeah. The first one I heard about, I think, was like in November. Yep. And I, we were in Spain. And then the next one was like on my birthday. Yeah. And See, that's like, the nice thing, right. too, is so, so many people look, tell me that. They're like, dude, I've been wanting to go to one, but like it keeps landing all these dates where I'm gone. It's like, great. There's potential for more people to come down yeah, like the, the road. The first time I've seen your face is on an ad, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was hilarious. like, who's this kid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of energy. But yeah. no, I love it, man. I mean, that's, yeah, that's right up our alley, too. Like bringing people together who just like have that similar mindset Mm -hmm. because like you said like you know I'm also usually the kid who's sitting there thinking about something right and it's you know you have your friends who don't do that and that's fine like you said you love spending time with them yeah something different sometimes you get in a room and everyone's just yeah everyone's turning there's an energy in the air maybe that's what you've been talking about exactly it's like that really if you play hockey you go hang around hockey players you're like these are my people like they love they eat breathe sleep hockey Hmm. I just eat, sleep, breathe, work. And I love ideas. And it's just like, yeah, man, it's it's a whole nother thing. But I just, I really hate, I get it 100% on like, you shouldn't work literally 24 hours a day and you shouldn't neglect relationships with your family and significant others and stuff. Like you do need a balance because it'll help you be more creative. But hmm. I work my ass off and I love it. And it's it's hard to pull me away, you know? Yeah. So what do you see like this next year? You guys got some big ideas for? Or, like, is it going to be the same kind of model or you're you're introducing new things or is that not announced yet? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things that are not, not announced yet. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, our lead designer, Ian, um, he'd be a good one for the podcast. He's this dude's crazy. He wanted to be a philosopher it was his dream job when he was like his first dream job. He ever can remember. He wanted to be a philosopher. Like, he's got deep ideas, but yeah, he, uh, he built out a website. So I'm excited to launch that. We've got some cool surprises coming up. And I think, I think we're going to play a big, uh, big, um, component in the sports marketing world I think we've got a good grasp in that and we partnered up with a sports agency that we're taking over all of their marketing and we've actually like this is insane because I've I'm I'm a pretty decent into like terminology in sports but not like a like a fanatic Mm. and like we're literally running NFL players personal social media accounts right now and it's just like (laughs) it's such a weird concept like it's so weird but it makes sense because we probably know how to like clean up the little algorithm and use the right quality photos and the right copy with the photo then so that they can just focus on the sport. And the reason why all these athletes want their Mm -hmm. social on point is because they want the brand deals. And so they want the following, they want the influence because especially like in the NFL, you only have so long of a, of a career in there where it's like legitimate safe and you got the contracts and all of that. But yeah, man. Like I, if you would have told me when I first started this thing in college in that class project, when I got a C, it's like, Hey, you got a C, but you're going to be running NFL players, personal so- social. I would have been like, how in the, you know, like <laughs> there's no way. Right. And so it's just like relationship building, long-term thinking, and just, you got to put in sweat equity. That's the thing that separates us more than anyone. Like we put in a lot of sweat equity to make sure that we're providing the right value because we believe in the brands that we're working with. And it goes a long way and they'll start putting you in front of the right people. And it's, it's insane, man. Yeah, dude, that's, that's pretty legit, man. Yeah. It's it's exciting to hear you say all that. It's, it's cool to see. Yeah. Just the transition and and yeah, just the purpose that you have with kind of like what you do. It's, it's cool to see. And something can come up tomorrow and it could be a whole nother direction, but that's kind of where we've been pivoting towards. And I really want to get into like conceptual branding and like, like rebranding and like all of that. I really want to get more into the strategy of things like the psychology of colors and stuff like yeah. that. Like that's just a whole nother ball game, but yeah, we've got, we've got a lot to learn and a lot to experience and probably some failures up the road, but it's, for sure. uh, it's got a good site in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. seems like there's good things to come for sure. And so I guess one other question I want to have about like just the resilience of going through that is like, you know, when there is a down day or a down week or when just, you're just feeling, because I mean, I, I think I go through it. I assume most people do. I don't want to speak for you, but there's times when you're in that mode and you're just, all these ideas are coming. And then for a minute or a day or a week or a month, you're just like, you just feel a little bit stuck. Yeah. And then you keep going again. But what, what do you have some habits or routines or thought process that you do when you just feel like, all right, 
today wasn't a good day or this hasn't been a good week. Yeah. But that just, you still keep going because you're connected to something. I'm, I'm curious like, yeah. what you do in those times. Yeah. We actually like, I, I don't know if I want to like necessarily speak for ourselves or from everyone in the company, but like, I personally feel like we were going through a little rut for a while. And so I think part of it is like, we were bouncing around and driving to Mankato and like, we didn't have like a home base cause we were, we were all over the place. And so we went in this like, almost like a, like a low moment. And, um, I think, um, again, it, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about, like surrounding yourself by the right people. And so when someone identifies that besides yourself, it becomes that much more real and you want to fix it that much more. And sometimes you're just like head down, going to work, you look up and it's like, there's not a lot of energy in the room. And so that's where I go into the brand place, getting like the office here in Minneapolis and, you know, we couldn't afford a bunch of stuff when we came here. So I started building tables and stuff to like show it. It's real. Like, I mean, I got this sign like three months into the company because I like tangible things. I like people to walk in and come see exactly like this is real. Like that neon sign we got a year into the company and that thing was a thousand dollars. Like I probably could have put a thousand dollars and made 5,000 somewhere else, but I threw it into the vision because it's that long play. Um, but that's also part of the reason why we took the personality test because maybe the right people aren't in the right seats or maybe we're not understanding how other people learn. And especially when someone like me who moves a million miles an hour, I'm now realizing this now, but I used to think everyone thought like me, not, not, not like directly, but like, you don't think like, oh, maybe they learn different or maybe they work different or maybe they mm -hmm. like to be communicated differently. Like we took this personality test and really understood and we're still working on it, but to really understand like, how do we position ourselves as a team? And how do we work as a team more intuitively? And when you work as a team, there's different energy in the room and there's different things. And um, I also, like with one of our, we started a book club, like where we're literally talking and reading through the book each week and talking it and relating it to our personal life and our career. And that's just like, you get more vulnerable with your team and you get more close and open. Mm -hmm. And that alone just brings up a lot more energy. And then for me personally, like I've identified like, we changed our work hours. Everyone used to be here at 8 a.m. And now it's like, hey, you can come in at 8, you can come in at 6, you can come in at 9. As long as you're not missing your meetings and you get the work done and you're communicating, like, that was a game changer for me. So, like, now I get up and I get up around 6.30 and I have a buffer. And I go down to downstairs to the gym and I walk on the treadmill and I read a book or listen to a podcast. And then I hit a lift and I come in at 9. And that's my routine for myself. Like, Ian, my designer, he he likes to come in early because he's, he's like an early bird and like, that's where he's most clear. And then he can go leave at like three thirty or three and go work on his personal designs, which he brings his creativity back from his personal designs into the, into the business. And it's like, it's just adapting. It's like, sometimes when there's low energy, it's probably because someone's just got a bubble over. This is the way it should be mm -hmm. and not listening to the team. And that was a big eye opener for me to be, to hear that, to hear that from my team. And it's like, it's, it's real and kind of going back to it. It's like, I want them to want to be in this forever. And if it's just me thinking the way that I want it to be, they won't be around forever. And so it, I'm telling you, dude, like the last two, three <laughs> months have been like, it's been vulnerable. It's been happy. It's been way up here. It's been way down there, but it's the ride we got to ride. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, going back to the sports analogy, like it's actually figuring out how the team works, yeah. right? Not just saying, Oh yeah, this is our, you know, this is our still social team. Like we we work together, but yeah. literally being like, well, what do you like? And, yeah. And what do you not like? And like, what things make you uncomfortable? And what things are you really good? And actually diving into that, that sounds super cool, man. That right. sounds like a, a a process that makes your business better, but also just like your relationships and stuff. Right? Yeah. It's and it's it tough to like. implement, man. Like it's, it's tough. It's, it's very easy to say like, oh, we do all these things, but it's tough to keep it consistent each week. And I mean, January 1, 2020, like, I just feel like we're on a different wave and it's kind of cliche to say that, but like, I think this is the year when I said watch that most people should watch. It's not, it wasn't the first four years. It's, I think it starts now. This year. Yeah. I'm excited to keep watching. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's exciting. It. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's get to, yeah, let's get to the question that I said I was going to ask, which is, again, you seem like a pretty purpose driven dude and like a motive, like a motivated dude. And I'm, I'm curious in your life, you know, what are those pillars that you consider to be like the buckets that you consider to be very important to fill for you to have an extraordinary life um, for yourself and for the people around you? Yeah, I think the first thing and obviously like I, sh I bleed this, but passion, like I got to be passionate about something. So I won't put it to a tangible thing. I think a bucket should be you have to be passionate about something and it could be work related or it could be personal related. Like right now, like 
I'm really back into the fitness game and it's just been very consistent and like meal prepping. So it saves me time on cooking and like just grabbing a meal each week. Like that's been a really big bucket for me to open up more opportunity and just really know who I am as a person. I think a second one is family. I think, I think that should just be obviously in everyone's um, given their circumstances, but family is really important to me. I'm someone who I call my mom every single day. Like I have that pillar. Like I call my mom every single day and we could talk about what happened with her day or I literally rant for an hour of like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've got this on the table or I'll call her and I'll just tell her my achievements and like, Shout out to my mom because, like, she's, like, the best listener ever. I, I would get sick. I get sick of myself talking to her. Like, <laughs> it's, I, I don't understand how she does it. But um, that's, that's just something to me. Like, I always got to have a touch point with my family. And then the other one is, like, what, what I'm really working on is, like, intentional and, like, intimate relationships. So, like, not necessarily romantic, but, like, who am I connecting with? Am I just making touch points and just being like, oh, what's up, man? Like, or am I deeply asking? So like lately I've been challenging myself, like just hitting up some of my homies, even just to text like, hey bro, how are you doing? And like, it, it goes a long way. Like they tell you things that you probably wouldn't hear and I could probably be better at it, but it's been something that I've been trying to do is like building those relationships because I'm so focused on my business relationships. Like I talk about longevity and long-term thinking, but I wasn't necessarily opening it up to my personal life. And so that's another bucket that I've really been focusing on is intentional relationships. And like, it's very easy to say, like, you want to provide value. It's another thing to do it. And then an, another step to implement it. So, yeah, it's just, I think those are the three that I'm focusing on right now. And, you know, six months from now, it could be another three buckets. But I, I just think it needs to be a little bit more broad where you can put certain things into those buckets. So yeah. between those three, I could put a ton of different things. But I think kind of like what that guy said, like, what was it? Consistent purpose with intention or something? Consistency like, with purpose. Yeah, yeah, consistency with purpose. Like, yeah. I think those are all purposeful things that can go either work or personal. And for someone who's a workhorse like me, like, I need those buckets to be broad enough where it can lean into work or it can lean into my personal life. For so, sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's exactly how I have it mapped out too. It's like you have your base stuff, but as long as you you fill in it in some way, right? right. I think the the what can change a lot. Yes, seems like exactly. I, but the why can't like it, you it can actually. Yeah, it can evolve over time. But I mean, I, it sounds like you're like me, where it's there's. I mean, there's a million things out in the world that are interesting. Yeah, and cool and fun and yeah. can fill a level of purpose or this. But understanding what you even need to be filled is, seems to be kind of like the base. Yeah, the base I was actually having a conversation it. with uh, Alex Fierro. He's uh, kind of our operational guy now, but. He's, he's got the exact same personality as me, which blew us away because I thought he was going to get like analysts. He's very organized and like spreadsheet driven. And I'm like, yo, like <laughs> here's this, you know, here's this crazy <laughs> idea and here's an unorganized Google drive. And, um, that really stuck out to me because we have the same personality type and he, it, and we, we really like the undiscovered. And so it's kind of like, we want to taste and try everything, but having those purposeful buckets of where do we need to be right now so that we can go keep tasting things yeah. was something that I think kind of like put us on in our own perspective. So I, I encourage everyone. I know I've been talking about this personality thing just cause it's so relevant, but I encourage everyone to take this thing cause <laughs> it is like spot on. You getting paid for this? No, I'm not. <laughs> just 16 personalities.com. And like, I like, uh, I just, I was scared to take it at first. Honestly, I was scared. I was going to get something that I didn't want to see. And like, I didn't want to face my reality. And I opened it up. I'm like, bro, someone's spying on me. This is not like, <laughs> this is not a general personality type. Someone literally wrote out like with all my Instagram tags and stuff. Like they just like read me and it was mm. so spot on. And it just like, it kind of made me feel at peace with myself. Like maybe mm. I'm not crazy. Like maybe this is just mm. like, who I am and like what fills my heart and my passion and like my intention and my vision. And yeah, it's just like, again, kind of like what you're saying, you can go and taste anything in the world, but you also need to back it up with a little bit of reality. And how do you be able to go taste everything in the world? And for me, it was mm -hmm. making that business card. And mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, I was like, Oh, I want to go do everything, make the business card. It was just like that gut feeling. And so sometimes you got to chase it and put it out there and learn your lesson or take the success and run with it. Yeah, for sure, man. That's pretty legit. And I like what you said about even just the idea of like longevity and relationships and investing in those two. That was a couple minutes back, but you know, just the idea of, of, I mean, that's a whole challenge in itself, right? But learning who's important to you and, and how can you extend that love that you have for your business to other people too, because mm -hmm. a lot of people need that. And I, I've been learning too, like the more you just put stuff out there, because for me, like it was, 
you know, I have all this, these thoughts and ideas and I'm like, God, I really want to tell people these things. Yeah. I really want to share them. Not because I think I'm, you know, some like 60 year old guru who like knows everything about life, but just because I see it and I'm right. like, somebody could help from this. And right. Exactly. When you start to do that, there is those moments of, Oh, like this person hit me up and I didn't think he would even be interested in this, but like he wants to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Like, that's interesting. Like, yeah. And just putting, putting that out there, like you put the business card out there and you put the Lincoln drink out there mm -hmm. and you're just putting things out there. And then if people can see that, like it's coming from a genuine place, they usually will be like, all right. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's respond to and that. And going back on that Lincoln drink thing, like we put out there that the very first, like when we launched it, we said we're going to host these every single, every other month. And if I didn't say that, I don't know if it would be like, I don't know if we would have actually like done it every single month. Like if we didn't put that out there and be accountable, like to the public that we were going to do this, I don't, I don't know if it would be where it's at today because we just put mm. that out there and we were like, all right, like we told, and I was like, like halfway through, I'm like, all right guys, this is a lot because our agency is growing at the same time. So we're managing two different businesses. It's service through butterfly, but like still a whole entire other business. Yeah. And, uh, when we put that out there, it just like. It's like, shit, like now we're accountable to the public. If we don't host these every other month, like now we look like the company that says things and doesn't do things. And so halfway through, I'm just like, all right, maybe next year we're going to kick it back to four and do <laughs> quarterly and make, and put more in time and attention into it. Not that it's too much work. It's just, we knew it could be so much more and we were running into issues with venues and stuff like that and catching up. And we, we just knew there was so much more. So we wanted to take it down a notch, put more mm -hmm. into it, provide more mm -hmm. value to people, build it up bigger and... Yeah, man, it's just you got to put stuff out there. And if you say something, you got to do it. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I think the structure aspect there, like that's what I've been thinking a lot about is like when you said you're going to do an event every other month, there's like that goal out there. And all of a sudden it makes it easier to like fill it because mm -hmm. I've been like the, one of the greatest quotes ever that was from the Dalai Lama who I'm just kind of obsessed with because I think he's just a yeah. genius. But it was like some like one of the most important things in life you can do is to set goals but like the second most important thing you can do in your life is to not care at all about the outcome of them. And it was like, interesting. that's interesting. Yeah. But his meeting was like, you have to set goals. You have to strive for them because it creates this like structure in your life. But like they're going to twist and turn. And so like now you're doing quarterly events. Like, yeah. you know, you can't be super set on the exact like, like best, like specific goal you had yeah. as far as like how it's going to look. Cause I think the last part of it was like, usually it turns out better than you even thought it was. Gonna yeah, turn out. exactly. Because and I love I, that. Yeah. If I said it's going to be, you know, for the next five years, we're going to do one every other month. Like I probably would have shut it down, but it's like, you just put it out there and you build that structure exactly like you said, and you fill in your buckets and kind of make it happen. And if it's too much, you taper it down. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's really just pivoting. Cause when you start, when you start a goal, it's like, you look at it as like a linear line. I'm going from a to Z but you have to hit maybe B's over here and C's over here. You have to, that's the pivotal thing. Like people don't visualize like, what does it mean to pivot? It's like your idea theoretically was going from here to here, but the way that you built the steps into that idea is actually over here. So you need to hit C and you need to hit D and you yeah. need to hit F yeah. and all the, all the other letters and stuff, because those are the things where your lessons are learned mm -hmm. and it just, yeah. And then you take what you learn and you move on and just keep going. Keep going, man. Right on, dude. Keep well, going. I got a couple of closing questions. I like this question. Somebody posed this a couple of months back to me and it, I think it simplifies looking at life a bit, but, uh, it's like, if you hadn't, like, it's your 80th birthday party. Imagine right now we're in the same room. We're all a bunch of 70 to 80 year old people. <laughs> we're chilling, we're raising a toast your best friends up there. Like, what would you want somebody to say about you after, you know, at kind of like you got 60 years until that, what are yeah. you like 24, 25? I don't even know. Yeah. But you know, what would you want like your best friend to go up there and say about you at the end of that? I think gee, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> um, it's interesting. I, it is very interesting. I think I would want them to, to say that I truly, brought ideas into existence and made a difference in the world. Um, I think, I think any business owner makes a difference, difference in the world. I mean, when you hire someone for a full-time position, like that's their career path at the time, you know, they might go different directions one way or another, but that's something that's just so inspiring to me to be kind of like, not necessarily the gatekeeper, but being able to like provide that. I want to be able to provide for people who inspire me or I inspire. And I would want them to say that, I 
really prove people wrong. And I, I made a difference in the world. And I don't know what that necessarily looks like because I've got 60 years to figure that out. <laughs> but um, I really want to make a difference in the world. And so, I, I mean, truthfully, like I've had people that say that I inspire them and they went and started something else. And I love that. And it's not bragging. It's like, that's real shit. Like you're, you got someone to go do something that they didn't think that they could do or they didn't want to start mm. or maybe they didn't even think about the idea. And that's why like, I put so much out there on my social about work and some people like look at it maybe like, oh, he's like a motivated hustler. Like he's one of those guys. And it's like, yeah, I could see that. And that's what I resonate with. So I'm not going to be anyone but myself. But like I, I directly impact a couple of people and I stay in touch with those people. And that keeps me going late through the night. That keeps me going early on and like getting those messages from people like, yeah, it's like, it's kind of like uh, the psychology of like when you get likes and stuff, like it, it's dopamine. Like it just fills, fills up your purpose and fills up your heart when it's like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe. Mm, yeah. It's hard to describe, but Feeling. I want to inspire people. I want to change the world and make a difference and, and just help out where I can. Wow. What a beautiful way to end the interview with Brandon saying that he just wants to inspire people and to change the world. Before you go, I want to share with you a call to action I have for you from today's episode. Based off what Brandon talked about, my call to action is think about one area of your life where you're running through the motions, where you don't have that passion, you don't have that energy. And just sit down for 10 minutes and ask yourself, what would not going through the motions look like? What would bringing passion and energy to that part of your life look like? Because as we saw with Brandon, he loves to bring passion and energy and excitement to all things in his life. And he thinks that you're leaving a lot on the table if you are just simply going through the motions. So that's my call to action for you. Think about one area of your life that you're just going through the motions in and how can you bring passion and energy to that area of your life? So with that, go out in the world and make those dreams a reality. I will see you next time, people.